हरे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाले कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्टुराशु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया <coughs> भगवती उत्तम श्लोकर्भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुम गोविंदय नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गलाधर शिवा सदगौर भक्त बृंदा हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे यू आर वेलकम फॉर कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ और भक्ति वेब ऑफ स्टडी ऑफ सिक्स कैंटो ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम दिस सब्जेक्ट मैटर ऑफ सिक्स सिक्स कैंटो इज मोस्टली पोषण पोषण और रक्षण बाय सुप्रीम लॉर्ड and we are in chapter 18 where there is a description of marutas the son of ditti instead of becoming daitya he become deva that is extraordinary so yesterday we finished we finished up till verse 19 and that was the dynasty of the kashyap and aditi and kashyap and ditti so kashyap and aditi and kashyap and ditti so in the last part it is said marutas are also sons of ditti and kashyap but they have no sons they have no descendants and they followed indra therefore now the next section is from verse number 20 to 31 maharaj parikshit ask a question how come maruta become actually demigods and before that he is asking how maruta are born it means how did the please the kashyap and how marutas were born and how they came they become demigod instead of daityas so this is the question of by parikshit maharaj shri rajo vacha katham sa asuram bhavam apohayao autapatikam guru indrena praptim satmayam किम तद साधु कृतम ही तई किंग परिषद इनको माय डियर लॉर्ड सुखदेव गोस्वामी ड्यू टू देयर बर्थ द फॉरी नाइन मरुत मस्ट हैव बीन ऑब्सेस्ड विद डिमोनिक मेंटेलिटी बिकॉज़ दे आर दैत्यस व्हाई डिड इंद्र द किंग ऑफ हेवन कन्वर्ट देम इनटू डेमीगॉड्स did they perform any ritual or pious activities it means did maruta perform any ritual or pious activities no why this came okay right so there's no purport for this verse parikshit is continue ime shardhate brahman rishyo hi maya sa parim jay parigyanay bhagavan tanno vyak व्याख्या तुम अहसी माय डियर ब्राह्मण 
I and all the sages present with me are eager to know about this. Therefore, a great soul kindly explained to us the reason. Me and all the sages are eager to know, to hear that topic. Parikshat put his faith in the sages. They have faith that you will make known to them the secret reason. So he gave respect to all those who were the audience. It means the lesson we should learn that even if we have a question, it is better we should say the rest of the devotee also are interested know, to know this secret. So it is better to keep all together. This is a, this is a, this is a sort of a, you know, sort of cooperation and coordination of the audience. Sri Shuta Vacha Tada Vishnu Ratasya Sabadarayanai Vishnu, who is Vishnu Rat? Parikshat Maharaj. His name by birth was Vishnu Rat because he was protected by, protected by Vishnu. And Badarayani, Sukhdev Goswami. Badarayan, one who was living in Badrika Ashram. So he's Badrayan. And his son is called Badrayani. Vacho Nishmaya Adritam. Vacho, Vacho means words. Nishmaya means, Nishmaya Adrat means heard with respect. Alpam Arthavata Devar. Artham, they were alp, they were, it, it was it said, in nutshell. It was like a ocean in a drop. That is the meaning. Alpa arthavata. It has, a, it has a more meaning, but the words were very, the sentence was short and meaning was too much. Sabhajayam sana nibrate na chetasa along with the alp. Assembly. Jagad Satrayana Sarva Darshana. Who is a Satrayan? Yes, yeah, Satrayan means those who are 88 rishis, they wanted to have a long sacrifice as a Satra. Sonakrishi. Satrayan is Sonakrishi. Satrayan is Sonakrishi. Because these 88 rishis, they wanted to have a sacrifice to stop the on-march of Kali Yuga, right? So it's Satrayan. Shri Shuta Goswami. Satrayan is in 88. Is that the meaning? Advait, what you are saying? The meaning of Satra is 88. Satra means continuous something, continuous yagya, oh. continuous hearing process. The the Badrika Ashram is also called Bandi, Badri Sandamandite Satram. There is also continuous hearing of the uh, Vedic literature which are going on in Badrika Ashram. So their word is also Satra. Satra means uh, some continuous spiritual activity. It may be Yajna, it may be spiritual discourses, it's called Satra. Bhagavad Sapta is called because seven days Satra it may be for 15 days, one month, then it's called Paksha. Satra means continuous. Like in our temples, there's a Satra Bhagavad going. It's not Satra because it's not continuous. Satra has to be continuous. Yeah, it's a, it's a Satra. O Suta Goswami says, Sri Suta Goswami said, O great sage Sonic, the Satrayan, after hearing Maharaj Parish speak respectfully and briefly on topics essential to hear, Alp Arthvat, Sukhdev Goswami who was well aware of the everything praised this endeavor with great pleasure and replied, Srila Prabhupada's question is appreciated. Maharaj Pariksha's question were very much appreciated by Sukhdev Goswami because although it was composed of small number of words, it contained meaningful inquiries about how the son of Diti, although born as demon, become demigod. 
Yesterday in last purport we have some uh, few lines we discussed if anybody remember. Regarding this one we are reading this line. Demons can be converted into devotees. Demonic peoples can be converted into devotees by good association, by endeavor. That was the yesterday's purpose, if you remember. So this is because this question is very important because this is focus on that theme. Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur stresses that even though Ditti was very envious, her heart was purified because of devotional attitude. This is also this question includes this answer also. That envious heart is purified by Vaishnava practice. Another significant topic is that although Kashyap Muni was a learned scholar and was advanced in his spiritual consciousness, he nonetheless fell a victim to the inducement of his beautiful wife. So how come he got eight children and 49? So there's, uh, there's another meaning in this uh, small question. All these questions were posed in a small number of words and therefore Sukhdev Goswami very much appreciated Maharaj Parishad's inquiry. It means when we ask some question, it should be well organized, not elaborate like go on talking and there's no meaning. So this is the Alpa Arthvat. Alpa Arthvat. Have you ha ever remembered the same type of word Alpa Arthvat somewhere else in Bhagavatam? Arthadam. Their word is there is Arthadam. Here is Arthvat. I think you have not reached to that. Kanto. Oh, there's Alp method, seven, kind of seven. Teaching of Prahlad Maharaj. Komare Machar, Komare Machar. But human life is Alp, but it is Arthadam. Exactly the same words are there. Right? This is, the, this is what I'm saying, same words are there. This is the way to really uh, train your mind. Arthavat means with many meanings. One meaning is obtained from the story, Chakravati Rapat says. Performing tamasic bhakti to the Lord with the goal of harming others. Diti was doing tamasic bhakti because goal was to harm Indra. One become purified in the heart. This is the first benefit of this story. Envious people can be purified by practice of devotional service. And along with the developing bhakti without tamas, one gain liberation from the sansar and give up the tendency for violence to others. So these are the benefits by practicing even bhakti with a evil mind. The bhakti itself purifies. Even not evil mind, but with a, some fruitive mind, still heart is purified. What is the example? What is the example? Dharva Maharaj, he went first, he, but he was also envious with his step mother. And he went to get a greater kingdoms, but his heart was also purified. So same way, you can see the same, you know, line of the story. Ditti is the proof of this. That is the first meaning of this story. There are those with crooked hearts who see fault in others, though they are intelligent, do not seize those same fault in themselves. There is the another point. Okay. Inder has killed your sons. Now what you are going to do? You are going to kill the Inder's other son. So it means what is the difference between you and that? 
So that, that, that is the next point, next uh, artho or the meaning of this uh, word. Diti is also an example of this. With her words starting with verse 24. This is the second meaning. A learned person can be cheated by the attraction of the woman. Kashyap is an example of this. This is the third meaning. Alpa means with measured syllabus. Sani Bhartena means completely concentrated mind. Satyaran is Sonak. Okay. So there are three meanings from the story that the question focused on. Okay. What is the practical application of this? Even if we, we have some, you know, enmity with some, the enviousness with you, if we really chant Hare Krishna, then our heart will be purified. And if we are thinking to endanger somebody, we are doing what he has done to us. So what is different between the two? So at least two things are for personal application in our devotional service. That even if sometimes we have the envious nature which is not at all required for the devotees. But if at all it is, it is better to practice devotion that it will be purified in due course of time. Okay. Um, I guess to jump from yes. Can we also quote the example of Daksha? Because he was, he was in the same category. He was envious. Who? Daksha. Huh? Daksha. Daksha. Daksha was envious, yes. Daksha, the fourth candle. He's also in the category of someone pra practicing kind of bhakti. But, but, but he was not purified. He has, a, he has a Vaishnava aparat of so great uh, Vaishnava Sambhu yes. that even after giving up that body, in uh, sixth canto, we have seen he has given up a body by going to the Agish merchant place where the sins are eradicated at Vindhya Hill. He had a direct, direct darshan of Lord Vishnu with eight hands. And then still he has come down from the son of Brahma as a Brahma. Now he has become son of the Kshatriya, Prachetas. But he's still Narada waiting for some time that he may rectify and I can bless him. But he again curse Narada. It means Vaishnava curse continues in his next life still. So that is the story we have, I think, already heard. Is it okay? So Sri Shukla... It's a big lesson because it, it, it means that if we have the mentality of taking violence against Vaishnavas, then we may not be purified at all. And there is also Vaishnava in one sense because all the demigods are Vaishnava by nature. But there is only one small difference between the demigod as a Vaishnava and a pure devotee as a Vaishnava. What is that difference? So the demigods have material desires. Ah, uh, demigods have material desire, okay. Sorry? Sakam Bhakta, they are Sakam Bhakta. But there is one more other important thing in third canto. Same thing. The devotees are compassionate and preaching and demigods are not. That is the most important. Devotees are compassionate and they are preaching and demigods are not doing that. Therefore, the devotees are more dear to God than the demigods. This is in the third canto. And in eleventh canto, demigod may be angry sometime and have the have the Adi Devik troubles. But devotees never ever harm anybody. This is eleventh canto. So different between the demigod and devotees. These are three places in the Bhagavatam. We, you have three, you know, different aspects, different between devotee and demigod. Though the devote, though the demigods are Vaishnava. Sorry? Demigod harm here. 
there's a tsunami, a tsunami coming and uh, the earthquake coming, who is doing all this? They become angry. Devigas may become angry. This is a uh, Nimi Maharaj is saying to the uh, uh, when the now Yogindra came, he said this. And third canto says this. So these are the three things for the Demigas, different between the two. Pure devotees, I think. Uh, the, the question is, both are Vaishnava, but still there is a difference between the two. The demigods are Sakam Bhakta, and devotees are pure devotees, and they are more dear to Lord because of these three reasons. I think two reasons I told. What is the third reason? Just we have something here. In the reason, so Vaishnava, I said something. Okay. Huh? They never want to farm anything. Goshti Doesn't preach. That's okay. But they are... Uh, I mean, the, the word used in third canto is because the devotee have a compassion and they preach, they are more dear to the Lord than demigods. You find out this third canto of Bhagavatam and mostly it will be in the prayers of the Brahman. Uh, because 9, 10, 11 and 12 chapters just like discuss with the devotees, so this is very fresh in my mind. Sri Shukravacha Katta Putra Diti Shakra Parshani Grahayena Vishnuna Manyuna Shoka Deeptena Jwalanti Paryachintayat Paryachintayat Hat putra, kat putra, how many sons? Diti shakra. Shakra means? Anybody who know what is shakra? Not sugar. Shakra is a short word for Indra. Shakra. Satta kartu. Shat means hundred. Kartu means Vedic yagya. One who perform one hundred. Ashwamed Yagya, he is qualified to be Indra. So, the small name for Indra is Shakra. It is a signature. Shakra. Parshani Grahayana Vishnuna. Parshani Grahayana. Shakra Parshani Grahayana. Who was helping Lord Indra? Vishnuna by Lord Vishnu. Manyuna, Manyu means anger. Manyuna. Shok, deepena, killed by lamentation. Jualavanti, burning. They were still alive. They were so what is Sukhdev Goswami said just to help Indra. Just to help Indra. Lord Vishnu killed the Two brothers, Hiranakash and Hiranakashipu, because of their being killed, their mother Diti, overwhelmed with lamentation and anger, contemplated as follows. Now Diti is thinking. First he is thinking, then she is uh, doing something, and then she is achieving. So this is thinking, doing, conceiving, th conceiving then thinking, then doing, and then achieving. This is the modern words philosophy, right? Conceive, think, uh, act, achieve. So this is what Diti is doing. Conceiving is not Conceiving, sure. conceiving to, to, to conceive something, what I want to do. Conceiving. With Indra helping from the back, or surrounding indirectly, okay? Verse number 24. Kadanu bratrahantaram indra indriya ram ulbanam akilin herdeyam papam ghatyatva shayesukham. 
Lord Indra, who is very much fond of sense gratification, which word is for sense gratification? Indriya Ramo. And what is the great saintly person? Atma Ramo. So the opposite word, Indriya Ramo and Atma Ramo. So, Indra is Indriya Ramo and the devotees are Atma Ramo. There's a difference between the you can put the list of the devotees and demigods are different. Indra Ramo and Atma Ramo. Okay. So Lord Indra, who is very much fond of sense gratification, had killed the two brothers, Rinakash and Rinakashipu, by means of Lord Vishnu. Therefore Indra is cruel, hard, hard-hearted and sinful. Then when I, when will I having killed him rest with a pacified mind? So after killing I will be pacified. Next verse. Okay, verse 20 to 31, Parikshat's question about the Marutas and Diti's service to Kashyap. 24, 26, Diti's contemplation. So, Diti's contemplation. This is next verse 5. So the verse 24 is actually quoted there by Vishnu Chakrapad. The how Diti was thinking same thing, what Indra has done. So same thing. He has killed my son, so I will kill. What, so what good is uh, you are? You are the same, right? So verse number 25. Krami vidabhasam samajjan samangyasi yasyasya abhihitasya cha bhuta dhrukatada krte swartam kima veda nadya yataha Srila Prabhupada is a purport about three words. Krami, Veda, Basham. Any, anything before, with, without reading translation, anything is coming in your mind? Krami, Veda, Basham. Basham. This is, this is, body after death undergo three these transformation. Body, after king even, after death, become either, if you leave it, it becomes creamy. It means the, inse uh, the, the insects. If you burn, it will become basam. And if somebody eats the dog, then it becomes vedan. So this is about the body. So now see the translation. When the dead, the bodies of all the rulers known as kings, and great leaders will be transformed into worms, stool, and ashes. If one enviously kill others for the protection of such a body, then your body is going to be same. Does he actually know the true interest of life? Certainly he does not. For if one is envious of other entities, he surely goes to hell. What about you, Diti? You are thinking the same way, right? Shri Prabhupada is a small purport. This Diti is a contemplating in her mind. So this is a great thing that she is talking about. She is saying, why she is, but what she is, she is thinking nicely. But what would she want to do? To kill in This is called, Demonic Vedanta. Hirana Kashipad was speaking this type of Vedanta to his mother, Diti, and uh, wife of his brother. Kansa is speaking same Vedanta to Devaki and Vasudev after the Durga appeared. He was speaking same Vedanta. But is a demonic Vedanta. If their interests are somehow Interrupted, they become violent. They say something, Elna Kashyap say, oh, he said, no, everybody is going to die, but then he said, I want to be eternal. So this is their so-called Vedanta. Srila Prabhupada writes, material body, even if 
possessed by a great king is ultimately transformed into the stool worm, worms or ashes. When one is too attached to the bodily conception of life, he is certainly no, not a very intelligent. And Chakruti Pada has given a little more how. After death, body of he who is called a king is remaining for two, three days, become worms. How it becomes worms? If you keep it somewhere. If eaten by dogs, it becomes stool. If it is burned, to the, burned by suns, it becomes ashes. That has been the definition of body of a king. Since this has been seen from example of previous kings, past tense is used in the verse. Thus one who commend violence to others being other beings for maintaining his body know his own benefit? He does not, because he goes to hell. This implies that Indra is without intelligence. She also is without intelligence because she wants to kill Indra. Same things, but she is speaking, this is what Ranaka says. Oh, everybody is going to die, but I will not die. So this is the same thing. So Indra is not intelligent, what about you? You are also not intelligent. Oh, she, she is also not intelligent. Why? Because she wants to kill Indra. One can see that both she and Indra commit violence. Both are hard-hearted and both do not know their own benefit. In this way, a person with real intelligence can determine the lack of discriminant, discriminant of unintelligent people. So what do you think around you, the people you live with, what is their position? They are same like this. He had done this thing wrong with me, I will do same thing with him. So both are not intelligent, right? This is the world we are living in. This is a preaching application. This uh, verse is a preaching application. Right now, okay, he is, he is violent, he is hard-hearted, he is sinful. What you are doing? You are doing the same. So what is the difference? So this is a preaching application basically. That uh, why people have so much uh, enviousness, hatred, wars, fighting, both are doing the same thing, both are not intelligent at all. So intelligent person can discriminate that both are not intelligent. Now next verse, verse 26. Ashashanasya tasyedam dhorvam unmadha chetasaha madha soshuk indrasya thought. Indra considered his body eternal. But the, what is the word? Where is the word et, eternal? Dhurvam. Last long time. Dhurvam. So Indra is uh, considered his body eternal and thus he has become unrestrained. Nobody can control him. I therefore wish to have a son who can remove Indra's madness, mother. Let me adopt some means to help me in this way. Now, this is her, she was conceiving like that. Thought, this was her contemplation. Now what she will act. I wish to have a son, okay. One who is in bodily conception of life is compared to, compared in the Shastra to an animal, Prabhupada writes. Like cows and asses, Gokhar Samanaha. Gokhar Samanaha. Where is this verse? No, Prabhupada writes, one who is in bodily conception of life is compared to the Shastra to the animal like. Where is which Shastra and where it is? Jasya Sibudi Kundape Tridhat Puke. This is the verse. Yeah? This is the verse. Kundape Tridhat Puke Ijya. This thinking Gokhar Samana. So this is the another way. Prabhupada wrote only few lines, but you have to find out the verse. 
why he said what is the uh, you know uh, reference part that he wanted to punish indra who had become like lower animal okay chakravarti pad rai may i have a son to destroy indra's pride because of this evil action this is my prayer indra thinks that he thinks his body is eternal and has an uncurbed mind why does eternal body what the eternal body of indra means they are they have they have they have nectar so their bodies last for a long time how, how much time indra's body last do you think everybody is 100 years according to their uh, parameters brahma is 100 year we are also 100 years but the parameters are so different the time scale is different Indra lasts for as long as Indra. When he comes to each month, so up to the month of Nandan. What Ajit Prabhu? He comes to each month when Indra comes to each month, so it's long, lasting as long as Nandan Tower lasts. Usually, when the post of Indra is filled, who fills the post of Indra? Manvantar Avatar. in every manvantar indra is changed now the indra is a purandar and the next manvantar bali maharaj will be indra so indra he has to give up his post they may live but he has to give up the post never new indra will come and sometime there was no indra and therefore lord has to act as indra what is that time and you have done this this is in your already finished curriculum is an episode of rish rishab uh, is co episode of rishab dev who stopped the rain when rishab dev was ruler no google somebody stopped the rain when when Rishab Dev become ruler. Or a Krishna. At that time, the Indra was not ordinary living entity. Who was ruling at that time when Rishab Dev was ruling, and he stopped the rain? And Rishab Dev has his own reign by his mystic power, and that then that person Indra, he gave his daughter Jayanti married to the Rishab Dev, and from that the hundred sons are born. Right? Which canto? At canto five. Is this? Canto five, chapter four. Huh? Chapter four, canto five. Chapter four, canto. Who was the Indra? Yagya. Because sometimes there's a post of Brahma, right person is there, not there, then Supreme Lord Himself become Brahma. So sometimes there's not right person for Indra, then Supreme Lord become Indra. I know Yagya. This Yagya will continue in the eighth canto also. Your eighth canto will begin with Yagya. Son of Akuti and Rishi Prajapati, which was adopted by Swambhu Manu. you find out and let me know in the upcoming class okay now the verse number 27 and 8 iti bhavena sa bhratro in this bhav in this uh, this is our now meditation and now what she is doing this is the verse says thinking in this way with a desire for a son to kill indra that he began began constantly acting to satisfy kashyap by her pleasing behavior o king diti always carried out kashyap's order very faithfully as he desired with service love humility control with words spoken very sweet 
to satisfy her husband and with smile and glances at him diti attracted his mind and brought it under her control purpose purpose is the psychology female psychology when the woman wants to endear herself to her husband and makes him very faithful she must try to please him in all respect when the husband is pleased with his wife the wife can receive all necessities ornaments and full satisfaction for her senses here and this is indicated by the behavior of diti when a woman satisfied her husband her desires are fulfilled therefore i will satisfy my husband by service this was her thought diti was 29 eva mistriha jadi bhuto vidwan api manogyaya this is very principle works with a principle eva mistriha jadi bhuto if somebody is actually jadi bhuto means enchanted by become like a doll vidwan api manogya somebody may be very learned baadam iti aho vish vivasho he will be carried out he will be helpless natat chitram hi yoshiti aldo kashyap muni was learned scholar he was captivated by diti's artificial behavior which brought him under control therefore he assured his wife that he would fulfill her desire such a promise by husband is not at all astonishing natcha chiram chiram means astonishing see is chiram means astonishing yes vichitram is not vichitram chiram means vichitram do learned kesh kashyap was captivated he said yes i will satisfy your desire that is not astonishing diti thought verse number 30 vilyo vilokya ekant bhutani bhutani adao prajapati istriha chakre swadeha deha ardham yaya punsham mati hrita in the beginning of creation now it's not the fault of kashyap or diti it is from the beginning of the creation lord brahma the father of living entities of the universe saw that all the living entities are unattached to anything so which means they are all like kumara want to go back to god to increase population he then created woman from the better half of man's body for woman's behavior carries away a man's mind so the word here is ardha ha uh, ardha swadeha ardha swa so means one's own deha means body ardha means half so generally the wife is called ardha angni the half body shilpa pad is a good part but this entire universe is going on under the spell of sexual attachment which was created by lord brahma to increase the population of entire universe not only in human society but also in other species as stated by rishabh dev in fifth canto of punshah striyah mithoni bhavam etan the entire world is going on under the spell of sexual attraction and desire between man and woman when man and woman unite the hard knot of this attraction become increasingly tight and thus a man is implicated in materialistic way of life this is the illusion of material world this illusion acted on to upon kashyap muni although he was very learned and advanced in spiritual knowledge as stated in manu santa shrimad and shrimad bhagavatam two places matra swasra dvahitra vana vivikta asino bhavet balavan indriya gramo vidvansa api karshati 
a man should not associate with woman in solitary place not even with his mother sister or daughter for the senses are so strong that they lead astray even a person advanced in knowledge when the man remains in solitary place with a woman his sexual desire undoubtedly be increased therefore the words ekant bhutani which are used here indicate that to avoid sexual desires one should avoid the company of woman as far as possible otherwise uh, just opposite woman should uh, avoid the company of man also sexual desire is so powerful that one is saturated with it if he stays in a solitary place with any woman even his mother sister or daughter ekant bhutani means man were without association by woman man's mind become captivated they enter the continuous river of sansar which means repeated birth and death verse number 31 Uh -huh. One question that such a man explain the marriage relationship between a soul within a man's body and a soul within a woman's body. Soul is part and parcel of Krishna, so both married if they serve Krishna together as a servant of Krishna, then their marriage is successful, because soul is eternal servant of Krishna, not the soul is servant of husband and soul is servant of wife. So maybe the next uh, purport there may be something. So from this third, from thirty verse, from yes, verse number thirty, huh? From yes. verse number thirty, okay. So the, the question is that the soul, the marriage doesn't happen between the soul. The marriage happens between the body. Yes. So it means as if one is at bodily platform, then he is captivated. If he is at a soul's platform, he can be saved. For this, in Krishna consciousness, our marriage relationship that we both are Krishna das, so we can assist one another in serving Krishna better. That is our purpose. And uh, from this purport, it, it doesn't say that actually, uh, Rishabh Dev, all these things. So, what 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 is it? it talks about avoiding. Huh? Just talks about avoiding company of the opposite gender. Yeah, soul's marriage with the soul. Huh? What is the what is the question? I think she has not sent me question back. Explain, Shakti Sharma. Huh? Explain the marriage relationship between a soul within a man's body and a soul within a woman's body, as described by Shri Lakshmi in his book for the Bible thirty six eighteen thirty. So entire universe is going on under the spell of sexual attraction. So marriage is at the bodily platform for sexual attraction, which are created by Lord Brahma to increase the population. It means actually, this the marriage is for increasing population. But nowadays nobody is increasing population. Simply they are enjoying. That is a problem. So it's not written here, but that is actually what it means. It's everywhere. The entire world is going under the spell of sexual attraction between man and woman. When man and woman is united, the hard net of attraction becomes increasingly tight, and thus a man is implicated in a materialistic way of life. This is the illusion of material world. This illusion acted upon kashyap, and one line here is: by woman and man's mind become this. They entered in the continuous river of samsara. If they are not a platform soul, they are a platform body. Then their life will continue in a birth after birth. Only kashyap can be captivated. So what to speak about ordinary men? But the devotees can. That that many examples will come up in come upcoming verses also. Verse number thirty-one. Evam susrushta stata bhagavan kashipa striya 
परम प्रीतो दित्तिम अहभीन अभिनंदयच माय डियर सन तात परीक्षित महाराज द मोस्ट पावरफुल सेज कश्यप बीइंग एक्सट्रीमली प्लीज्ड बाय द माइल्ड बिहेवियर ऑफ हिज वाइफ दित्ति स्माइल एंड स्पोक टू हर एज फॉलोस व्हाट कश्यप इज सेइंग श्री कश्यप वाच वरम वर्य वारुम उरु वारुम उरु प्रीतस्ते अहम अनिंदिते स्त्रिया हा भर्तरी सुप्रीते हरह काम इह चागमा कश्यप मुनि सेड ब्यूटीफुल वुमन ओ इरिप्रोचेबल लेडी अनिंदिते I am very much pleased by your behavior. You may ask from me any benediction you want. If a husband is pleased, what desires are difficult for his wife to obtain, either in this world or in the next? Next verse. पत्रे नारीण देवत परम स्मृत मानस वासुदेव स्त्रि पति सवता लिंग मूप विकाल विकल्पत इज्जय भगवान कुंभी स्त्री से पति रूपद्रिक दिस इज दि वर्ष ऑन दि बेसिज ऑन दैट पीपल सेट पति परमेश्वर this is the verse a husband is the supreme demigod for the woman the supreme person of the god head lord vasudev the husband of god is fortune is situated in everyone's heart and worship and is worshiped through the various names and forms of the demigods by fortune workers similarly a husband is represent the lord as the object of worship for the woman here is a purport by chakravarti pad i think shila pad pad purport lord says in bhagavad gita 923 ye apyanya devata bhakta yajante shardhyan vita te pi ma me va te ta te pi ma me va kon te ha yajanti avidhi purvakam whatever one may sacrifice to other gods so son of kunti is really meant for me alone but it is offered without true understanding the demigods are various assistants who can work like a hands and legs of the supreme person of god one who is not in direct touch with the supreme lord and cannot conceive of the exalted position of the lord is sometime advised to worship the demigod as the various part of the lord a woman who is usually who are usually very much attached to her husband worship her husband as representative of vasudev the woman benefit just like ajamil benefited by calling for narayan his son ajamil was concern, concerned with his son but because of his attachment to the name of narayan he attained salvation simply by chanting that name in india a husband is still called pati guru The husband is spiritual master. If husband and wife are attached to one another for advancement of Krishna consciousness, their relationship of cooperation is very effective for such advancement. This is the line we have to put in an answer. You can see this verse has an answer. Prabhupada's to this question: Husband and wife. See, if the husband and wife are attracted to one another for advancement in Krishna consciousness. their relationship of cooperation is very effective for such advancement although the names of indra and agni now this is a philosophical answer now although the name of indra and agni are sometimes uttered in the vedic mantra indra is swa agni is swa the vedic sacrifice actually performed for the satisfaction of vishnu but they are names are like that similarly as long as one is very much attached to the material sense gratification the worship of the demigod or the worship of one's husband is recommended chakravarti path says 
the husband is a jeeva how can he be lord devatam the supreme lord was the who is presiding deity of chitta manasa is worshiped by karma yogis by the indication of the devatas such names like indra and form like his form holding a thunderbolt variously combined thus the lord is addressed by, addressed by various names and forms with words like indra is swa agni is swa similarly lord in the form of husband is worshiped by his wife why because vasudev is sitting situated in his heart therefore but who should worship like that pav pad rights as long as one is very much attached to material sense gratification they can worship demigod or asman otherwise they should worship krishna together was 35 तस्मात्पतिव्रता नार्य श्रेय काम समुदाय समुद्यमे यजंती अन्य भाव पतिमात्मा देर फोर ओ माय डियर वाइफ कशिप इज सेइंग हुज बॉडी इज सो ब्यूटीफुल यू वेस्ट बीइंग थिन दिस इज द वर्ड सुम मध्य मध्यमी a kind a conscientious wife should be chaste and should abide by the order of her husband she should very devotedly worship her husband as representative of representative of vasudev duty of devoted wife was 36 so aham tave archito bhadre idrigga bhave na bhaktitah तम ते समाप्य काम असतीना सुदुर्लभम माय डियर जेंटल वाइफ बिकॉज यू हैव वर्शिप मी विद ग्रेट डिवोशन कंसीडरिंग मी रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ सुप्रीम पर्सन आई गॉड इट आई शैल रिवार्ड यू बाय फुलफिलिंग योर डिजायर व्हिच आर अनऑप्टेनेबल फॉर एन अनचेस्ट वाइफ was now what it is saying and then kashyap will be actually completely lamenting kashyap will be lamenting then that he says varado yadi me brahman putram indra hanam vrne amrityum mrtta putram ये न मे घति सुत नाउ इन दिस वर्ड देर आर टू वर्ड्स टू नोट इंद्र हनम इट हैज टू मीनिंग वन हु कैन किल इंद्र इज एन वन मीनिंग द अदर मीनिंग इज वन हु फॉलो इंद्र एंड सिमिलरली मृत्युम अमृत पुत्राण so because indra is amrit so he is not amrit what it means so two things are in purport diti replied oh my husband oh great soul i have now lost my sons last line of the verse if you want to give me benediction i ask you for an immortal son who can kill indra i pray for this because indra with the help of vishnu has killed my two sons ernakashipu and ernakash Shri Prabhupada writes, the word Indrahana means one who can kill Indra, but it also means one who follow Indra. This is one thing to remember always. The word Amritam refer to demigods. They are called Amar, and the place of demigod is called Amarapuri. Amar Amarapuri. Indra's abode is called Indrapuri. Amarapuri. What it means actually? who do not die like ordinary human beings because they are extremely they have extremely long duration of life for example the duration of brahma's life is stated in bhagavad gita sahasar yug paryatam ahar yad brahmano vidho or even the duration of one day or 12 hours of brahma's life life is 
four lakh say forty three hundred thousand years. Thus, the duration of his life is inconceivable for an ordinary human being. The demigods are therefore sometimes called Amar. It is not. It mean does not mean they are eternal. So there are two type of Amrit. What are the two type of Amrit? At least you know. Hare Krishna. Two type of Amrit or nectar. Today our friend is not there. Pula, Pulas. Okay. So a demigod Amrit and then Bhagavat Amrit. So when when. When Sukhdev Goswami was coming to speak Bhagavatam for Parikshat Maharaj, Inder came and brought the part of heavenly nectar. And he wanted to exchange that. He said, you give this immortal nectar to Parikshat so he will not be killed by the Daksha. And you give Bhagavat Amrit to us. And what was the answer given by Sukhdev Goswami? You are not fit to receive Bhagavat Amrit because you want to extend your Amrit for Bhagavat Amrit. So it is a say, you are not fit, take your part and go away. And sometimes say it was, they said it was in front of Parikshat Maharaj to test whether, his name is Parikshat, to test, to examine Parikshat whether he is interested in Amrit or he is interested in Bhagavat Amrit. So, Parikshat Maharaj did not look at, uh, at all at the nectar of Indra. He simply said, I need Bhagavat Amrit. And philosophical point to learn from this is Bhagavat cannot be relished by paying money, which is going on, which Prabhupada writes. Uh, professional reciters, that's what it means. So based on this episode, that even Sukhdev did not exchange the Bhagavatam against the nectar of the heaven. So what to speak of? Giving the real Bhagavatam to the people who want to purchase it by money. That is uh, what Prabhupada wants to say. That is the different thing. I will not say. People sometimes ask me, well, you can come and speak Bhagavatam. What are your charges? They ask like this many times. I say, we are preachers. We come with our own fear. If you bring the people to listen Bhagavatam, then we even will take prasad in our own temples. There, simply you organize preaching program. This is what our answer to them is. If at all you want to give some dakshana which is supposed to be given to the Brahman, it is up to you. It is not our demand. One rupee or one paisa is okay for us. But you listen, that is more important. You organize. But the other professional, they say, well, we don't charge anything, but you have to deposit five lakhs rupees for our ashram. And then we don't want to use others' microphone. Our sound people will come, yes. three, th three, two lakhs rupees for that. Yes. And also, we don't need anything, but as a musician, they are poor people. They, they need two lakhs. So ultimately, you have to arrange 15 lakhs rupees, something like that. We don't need anything, they say. <laughs> No, um, it's, it's not good actually that you you ask somebody for money again for your kirtan or for your uh, discourse. But sometimes people don't ask them they also very cheaply. But cheaply. We are preachers. We are beggars. We think that we are simple. Prabhupada said, we are beggars, we are preachers, we, whatever they consider, say, if I tell, if I, if I come for uh, speaking Bhagavat, uh, 50 lakh rupees, then I will be big man, I will be worst man 
in the eyes of Krishna. So, the genuine people have always respect automatically. There's no need for this. But I'm, I'm sorry even now from Vrindavan people who are going. And I remember when I came in this temple 30 years back, something 25, people used to invite uh, the devotees with foreign devotees for Harinam. And we used to take, but they used to pay the fare, that's it. They feed devotees, they give fare, then when they used to give, go like that. But now if you ask, you need some foreign devotees, thousand rupees per day each devotee. So this is a sort of organized business. This is not what Prabhupada wanted, but this is going on. Say, say temple if has some speaker for some time and then they have some fundraising program. But most of these really genuine speakers don't agree for that. This is not my business. Some, something worse is happening also because I have people who said they wouldn't be for Western lady devotees to dance in the kirtan, which is really so ridiculous. Well, this is going on. This is going on like anything. Going on. What is your question? Devi Shakti told me that when Prabhupada used to give class, we used to give them the envelope, empty envelope to the people if they want to give some dakshana for that. But it's not that we said you give this much only, then you can enter, it's not like that. Okay, so if we keep any, uh, you know, peace for some seven or three days, seven or three days, that is not appropriate. I mean, uh, this is in a, in, a, in a more, you know, uh, uh, Civilized atmosphere, you just keep a, some desk where uh, your contribution for this whole program is accepted here for the prasad and for all these things. But anyway, what's going on today, I don't want to comment. But somebody, I think we should write. Even if you have a seminar or you're running classes over here, I mean, my language, I call. It's not for business. Seminar, I, I, in my language, called semi means half, and nar means water. This means half watering the real truth. Because you are not, you are only giving something, and mostly the seminars are general on some psychology and some other things, and not really on the uh, Bhagavatam as it is. I, I have seen many seminars going on in Russia and other places. Well, I, what I'm saying, this uh, the point here is Prabhupada was not in favor of this. He was happy that people should contribute for Krishna consciousness. But it's not that we should skew, squeeze out money from that against our preaching, no. He said in Vrindavan, you preach, money is byproduct. The money will come at the feet of a Brahman. And Brahman, he, in Vrindavan lecture, he said like that. The money is by prayer. Don't look into the pocket of the people coming in the temple. Look into, into their heart. Give them Krishna consciousness. They, they will give their life. Prabhupada has this mood. Hare Krishna. Anyway, it's a big topic. I think uh, in 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, you have prasad ready. Okay. Therefore, the word Amritam indicates that the Diti wanted a son who would be equal in status to the demigods. Okay, verse number 38. We have 44 more verses to go in the evening. We have to finish this chapter this evening. Nishmaya tadavacho vipro vimanna 
विमन्ना प्रत्यह प्रत्यप्य अहो अधरम सुमदा सुमहान अद्यमे समुपस्थित अधर्म कशिप इज लेमेंटिंग एक्चुअली अपान हियरिंग दिट इज रिक्वेस्ट कशिप मुनि मज वेरी मच एग्रीव्ड अल्लास ई लेमेंटेड नाउ आई फेस द डेंजर ऑफ इम्पायस एक्ट ऑफ किलिंग इन द अधर्म शिल्पाद राइट्स Although Kashyap Muni was eager to fulfill the desire of his wife Diti, when he heard that he wanted to, he wanted a son to kill Indra, his jubilation was immediately reduced to nothing because he was averse to the idea. Because Indra is also his son, a son from Aditi. Yes, Kashyap was full of sorrow because. getting her with her, her wish means the death of the indar it was devastating to him he says now lamenting so verse number 32 to 43 this is desire to kill indar and kashyap's reflection kashyap reflection on woman's nature verse 39 from here on kashyap is reflecting on the woman's nature aho arth indriya ramo yoshim maihi hamayaya grahita chet sa kripana pati shahi narake dhurvam kashyap muni thought alas i have now become too attached to material enjoyment taking advantage of this my mind has been attracted by illusory energy of the supreme personality of god it in the form of woman my wife therefore i am surely a wretched person who will glide down towards hell verse 40 ko atikramo anavartanyat ha swabhavam iha yoshitah स्वार्थे दिस वुमन माय वाइफ हैज अडॉप्टेड ए मींस दैट फॉलोज अर नेचर एंड देर फोर शी इज नॉट टू बी ब्लेम्ड इट इज अर नेचर but i am a man therefore all condemnation upon me dik i am not at all conversant with the with what is good for me since i could not control my senses senses ajit indriya shri pav pad rights the natural instinct of woman is to enjoy the material world she induces her husband to enjoy this world by satisfying her tongue belly and genital how to use this word which is called jiva udra upastha a woman is expert in cooking palatable dishes so that she can easily satisfy her husband in eating when one eats nicely his belly is satisfied and as soon as his belly is satisfied the genital becomes strong especially when a man is accustomed to eating meat and drinking wine and similar passionate things he suddenly becomes sexually inclined it should be understood that the sexual inclinations are meant not for spiritual progress but for gliding down to hell thus kashyap muni considered his situation and lamented in other words to be householder is very risky unless one is trained and the wife is also follower of her husband so these are the lines from these purports or krishna nilamani from these purports some lines we have to put in that question to make that question uh for your sake 
It's all right. You, you have to use your brain. What it is? You have to use. Thus the Kashyap Muni considered the situation of lamentation. In other words, okay. The husband should be trained at the very beginning of his life. Kumaram Achareta Pragyo Dharman Bhagavataha. During the time of Brahmacharya, a student life, a Brahma, Brahmacharya should be taught to be the expert in Bhagavat Dharma. That is devotional service. Then when he marries, if his wife is faithful to her husband and follows him in such life, the relationship between the husband and wife is very desirable. However, relationship between the husband and wife without his spiritual consciousness, therefore the word in, the, in that question is soul. So it means it's spiritual. Was it strictly for sense gratification is not at all good. It is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam 12, 2, 3, that especially in this age of Kali, Yuga, Dhamma Patyai, Inichur, Hetvaha, the relationship between husband and wife will be based on sexual power. Therefore, householder life in the age of Kali is extremely dangerous unless both the wife and husband takes to Krishna consciousness. So you have to quote all this. I'd ask, ask Mataji what is actual question. What offense is there for the woman who simply follow her nature of cruelty? Ah, ah, ah. Verse 41, I think we should what is the time now? It is 1.20. Oh, in five minutes we should finish this. I think it will go till 43. Hridyam Kshuda. Oh, this, this verse, is, verse is very heavy. The woman's face is as attractive as beautiful and blossoming lotus flower during autumn. First line. Sharta padam utsavam vaktaram vaktaram means face. And then next line, her words are very sweet. Vachascha sharvana amritam. And they are very sweet and they can give pleasure to the ear. But if we study the woman's heart, hirdyam, we can understand it to be extremely sharp like a blade of razor. Hridyam Kshoradhara Abham Kshoradhara In these circumstances, who could understand the dealing of woman? Sriram ko veda cheshtitam Ko veda, who knows? Shri Prabhupada Woman is now depicted very well from the materialistic point of view by Kashyap, not a spiritual point of view. Women are generally known as the fair sex and especially in youth, at the age of 16 or 17, women are very attractive to men. Therefore, woman's face is compared to blossoming lotus, flower in autumn. Just as lotus can actually be beautiful in autumn, a woman at the threshold of the youth, beauty is extremely attractive. In Sanskrit, the woman's voice is called Nari Swara. Become because women generally sing and their singing is very attractive. At the present moment, cinema artists, especially female singers, are especially welcome. Some of them earn fabulous amount of money simply by singing. Therefore, as taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, woman singing is dangerous because it can make a sannyasi fall a victim to the woman. It's based on this purport, there was a big debate for Mang, uh, for Darshan Arti singing of His Grace Jamuna Mataji Govindam Adi Purusha. There was a big debate. Sanya says, we don't want this. Prabhupada says, she is not a woman, she is a devotee. So devotee is not a woman. She is a materialistic woman. So Prabhupada said, the Sanya says, always had this type of discussion based on some purpose. And the same thing was going in Calcutta like that in, in morning walk. But when they reached to the temple, the Mataji made a beautiful garland. They came forward. They offered garland to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, they are not women. They are devotees. 
So this is not for devotee woman. This is for ordinary worldly woman. Okay, therefore, sannyasi. Sannyasi means, sannyas means to give up the company of woman, but if a sannyasi hears the voice of a woman and sees her beautiful face, he certainly become attracted and sure to fall down. Therefore, we have many examples. Even the great sage Vishwamitra fell victim to Manika. Therefore, a person desiring to advance in spiritual consciousness must be specially careful not to see a woman's face or to, a woman, to hear a woman's voice. To see a woman's face and appreciate its beauty or to hear a woman's voice and appreciate her singing are very nice is a subtle fall down for a brahmachari and sannyasi. Thus the description of woman's features by Kashyap Muni is very instructive. When the woman's bodily features are attractive, when her face is beautiful and when her voice is sweet, she is naturally a trap for a man. The Shastra advised that when such a woman comes to serve a man, she should be considered to be like a dark well covered by grass. In the field there are many such wells and man who does not know about them drop through the grass and fall down. Yes, many sannyasis we have in our movement. They, be they become trapped into these wells. Yes. Thus there are many such instances, instructions. Since the attraction of the material world is based on the attraction of woman, Kashyap Muni thought under the circumstances who can understand the heart of a woman. Chankya Pandita also advised Vishwaso Naiva Kartavya Strishu Raja Kuleshu Cha. There are two persons. One should never trust the politician and worldly woman. These, of course, are authoritative Shastric injection, and we should therefore be very careful in our dealing with women. Sometimes our Krishna conscious movement is criticized by mingling men and women, but Krishna conscious is, not, is meant for everyone. Whether one is man or woman does not matter. Lord Krishna especially says, Sriya Vaishatta Shudras Tepi Yanti Param Gatim. Whether one is a woman, Shudar, or Vaisha, not to speak of being a Brahman or Kshatriya. Everyone is fit for return back to home, back to Godhead. If he strictly follow the instruction of the spiritual master and Shastra. We therefore request all the members of the Krishna conscious movement, both men and women, not to be attracted by bodily features, but only to be attracted to Krishna. These are the two lines to add in that question. We have another question for this. Huh? Okay, that's not so. The, then everything will be right. Otherwise, there will be danger. So we add and hear. This evening, we'll start from verse number 42. The last verses have no purpose, I think. One, two is, the most has not. So the request is that they should be attracted to Krishna, not to one another's body. So importance of that is always. So we should not be attracted to us. Yeah, we should be, we both should jointly be attracted to Krishna because Krishna is all attractive. The bodies are going to dwindle day, today or tomorrow. So our, our love and attraction for, should be for Krishna and we should keep the relation just to serve Krishna. So here we end our morning class and evening Krishna's willing, Krishna Bhas Balaram willing, we will finish this chapter. Is it okay? Any question or comment? Ah, it's nothing. Some verses there's no purport at all. I looked at these verses, there's not much purport. Only last few verses as a purport. Tomorrow we have only 28 verses for two classes. To end, how to how to execute punch one worth. 
So from which day, what to do, what are the do's and what are the don'ts of that uh, go. First there are do's and there are don'ts. So that's what I think. Okay, any other question or comment? After evening class, I think I should finish first this because they have one day one day curtailed from me. After finishing this chapter, we can have that. Yeah, because uh, the otherwise I, uh, the whole group will be in trouble. Yeah, they have to finish this. I think we we'll, you can have a presentation. I hope we will be able to finish by six thirty or so if we start in time. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhaktivinoda ki jai. So, our Ajay is not coming in this morning class, right? Where is two, two is 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 a, a late night for them, maybe one o'clock, huh? But <laughs> so you must take rest to get but five for the matter another next class. <laughs> so.